Anya Bhagavat, Antyakanda 2, Chapter 8, the Lord's pastimes in Jagannath Puri. And we have a very wonderful scene here to try to capture in our mind of the uh, two parties meeting each other. So, meetings are always very exciting and uh, heartwarming, or let's say they're exciting. When you meet a beloved or you meet an adversary or whatever. So, because sometimes you see movies, there's these these, uh, what do you call it, these epic, epic movies, or the um, war movies or something where the, the British soldiers are marching in one direction, and, uh, you know, the camera's on one side and sees the faces of, the, of the one army and what they're chanting, and then the camera's on the other side and you see the other army, and then there's a bigger camera showing that both of them going down the road, doom, doom, doom. Maybe it's the Middle Ages and it's one king attacking another king, the Mughals. It's like King of Bharatpur attacking Delhi, you know, and Suraj Mal attacking the Mughal emperor in Delhi, and then he defeated him and built this Christian silver place. So then you would see all these camels and elephants and tum, 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 so much drums. So now, and then there's a meeting, of, then you see movies where, you know, the, the lover is separated from the love and she's walking along the beach, and then the, and the lover is, sees the distance and says, oh, and she says, oh, and they're running, you know, they run like this, and then the man picks up his lover and twists her all around, you know, and she goes, the feet go flying out like that. So there's a meeting, you know, the meeting of beloved, and the same thing in Krishna Leela, it's called Avisar, love journey. There's love journey, there's love journey in Gaur Leela, there's love journey, Avisar, Gaur Leela Avisar, and Radha Krishna Avisar. It means the journey to meet the beloved. So in this, in one, and it's very interesting because in Gaur Leela, or rather in Krishna Leela, say for example, the, there's one uh, Nayak, Krishna, Vishaya Lamban, uh, Vishaya Lamban, uh, Vibhada Lamban, uh, Prem Vishaya Krishna, and then there's thousands of gopis coming in all different directions from different villages to meet him in the Maharaj, and they will all converge in the Rasa Stali and meet that one Krishna, Ekobha from the one come so many, and so many come to see the one. And then they, and they have Milan, they meet, and it's so uh, enriching and exciting and love-fulfilling. Uh, so here, the many are the, the Gaur Bhaktas, the Gaur Bhakta Vrindaki, uh, and they're coming, from, they're coming from Shantipur, and they're coming from Ambikalana, and they're coming from Saptagram, and they're coming from Mayapur and Navadvip, and they're coming from Chittagon, and they're coming from East Bengal, and they call Bangladesh, all over they're coming to, to go to the Rathiatra festival. Just like nowadays we attend Rathiatra and we meet devotees from Australia, or New Zealand, or Russia, or Delhi, or Bombay, and old friends, we, we all meet at the one place, with the one Lord, for the one purpose of meeting the Lord, seeing the Lord, of relishing the Lord's association, serving the Lord, and meeting the devotees, relishing the association, serving. Devotees, Bhakta Bhagavan, they're inseparable. Hari Guru Vaishnava, they're one, they're one ocean with, they're one ocean of love, with different waves on that ocean. The ocean of love is Krishna Prem Sindhu, and one wave is Guru, another wave is Vaishnavism, and the whole ocean itself is is the love of Krishna. It's Krishna is the ocean, and he lifts everyone up, and everyone's moving that ocean. So to see this in our meditative eye. As we read the Shastras, I have a section in my book called Seeing the Shastras Through the Camera Lens of Absorption. I call it that. And it's uh, so nice because uh, if you read it, as people often study Gita, to understand from a philosophical way, uh, when devotees are more uh, studying the Samanda Tattva of the Lord, they want to understand the interplay of why different names are used in Bhagavad Gita, Orishikesh, O Padmana, O Govinda, and different names, O Achuta, O Krishna, different names, why Arjun calls Krishna with different names, and why Krishna calls him different names, O Gudakesh, O Pritu, O Sonaparta, O Gudakesh, one who conquers sleep, and different names, are, they, they call each other to elicit different feelings and emotions. And remembrances are different. He says, Oh, Konteya. Oh, Konteya. You forgot. You are, you are Konteya. 
you are the you are Panda, O Panda, O Panda, O, o Kunti, O Kunti, you are the son of Queen Kunti, Kunti Rani. You're, you're, you're running away from, from the battlefield and you're have such a wonderful mother and dynasty. So we try to we analyze and then why this chapter flows in this chapter, in this section, people analyze. But then going to Leela, Prayoshana Tattva, studying Leela, Gaur Leela, Krishna Leela, you should also analyze, not on the basis of uh, philosophical principles so much, but that's there, but just on the basis of Ras and the exchanges. There's not so much Ras in Bhagavad Gita also. The people generally overlook the Ras of Bhagavad Gita and they concentrate more on the, the philosophical presentation, which is so beneficial for establishing us in a strong uh, position of Krishna consciousness, foundation of Sambandha, so we can progress in sadhana and attain the Vyodhana of pure bhakti and bhava, wherein we can relish, actually, actually relish and experience and taste the mellows of devotion, bhakti ras, viva, and all these, you know, madhuriya bhakti, madhuriya ras, sakhi ras, sakhi bhakti. So here it's very nice because uh, it's kind of a little delayed because we only have a class for a half hour, so it's very uh, it's just like a pregnant moment, as they say. We, we get a little bit of the story each day. It's almost like a television serial, these soap operas. It's an ongoing story and it has 51 episodes. Every day, every day for a half hour, the lady keys in at 3 to 3.30. And, um, what happened yesterday? yesterday the, the man knocked on her door. and. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, and then today, and that, not what's going to happen, what's going, who is that man, you know, <laughs> what will she do? So, there's a suspense, so there's a lot of suspense when we have class like this. So what's happening on one side, there's the one Lord, Mahaprabhu, and all the devotees are coming, Vaitacharya, and Shivananda Sain, and Kavi Karnapur, and Shivananda Sain's family, and uh, Vaita, and Gangadas and so many devotees are coming to meet Mahaprabhu, who is of course surrounded by his uh, Parishads and Puri. Nityananda is there, Sarabhum Bhattacharya, Gadara Pandit, and others. Haridas uh, Pandit, Haridas Tatpura. So this is where we pick up here. And so I wanted to just say this so we could kind of keep in our mental panorama screen of our mind. We can see all the tum tum tum. Mahaprabhu coming from Gambira. He comes out of Gambira and he walks down the Grand Road. And that's the value of going to uh, Anyatra. So we go on Anyatra to Puri so we can see the topography. And we can see here's the, here's the Shri Mandir. And here's Shweta Ganga. And so on Bhattacharya is so close. And he has some tunnel under his house that went into the temple. So and they show that. And it's very near. From his house you can see the temple of Dalman and something. And on the other side of the street, down the hill, there's Haridas Thakur's very lonely, faraway place in the jungle, Siddhavokul. And on the main road, there's Kashi Mishra's house. He's the superintendent of the Mandir. And he's a Brahmin Mishra, same Gotra as Lord Chaitanya Mishra. So he's on the main road, going to Jaina Temple. And inside, there's a room, Gambira, Lord Chaitanya is there. So then Lord Chaitanya comes out and he proceeds down the, the lane and then Nityananda joins him in Nityananda's house. Where Nityananda's state is uh, behind, just behind, kind of opposite the Sri Mandir, behind one road there. It's in my book. Many times wait then Nityananda will stay in one house with one Brahmin there. So now this is where we start. The Lord is coming to meet his devotees personally. I love Vaita Shuni Sri Vaikunta Pati. Agu Bari Lena Priya Goshtira Samhati. When the Lord of Vaikunta, Goranga Mahaprabhu, heard about the arrival of the Vaita Prabhu, he took all his associates that were living with him in Puri and he went to greet the Vaitacharya. Who was with him? Who went along on that greeting party? And that Avisar is his. This is the Lord's Goranga's Avisar to meet his beloved. And then there's a meeting point. And Gor in Krishna Lila, the meeting point of the assigned place of meeting is called Sanket. Sanket Kunj. Kunj, of course, is a beautiful uh, uh, private collection of trees and bamboos, which makes a natural uh, meeting place and confidential cottage in the forest 
where Radha and Krishna can enjoy their intimate pastimes in the conjugal dalliance. And that place is called Sanket Kunj. Sanket. Sanket means arranged by prior, uh, designated by prior arrangement. It's the appointed place or the selected place, the, the chosen meeting place. So now, in the same way as Radha and Krishna meet in a specific place, although there's sometimes we go to villages in Barsana, they say this is Sanket, Sanket Grammar, Sanket. There's so many Sankets all over Braj, there's places like Radha Kunda is a Sanket Kund, but it, it's not specifically called that. There's one place where Gopal Bhatta Goswami, I believe, has a Bhajan Kutir, and it's between Barsana and Nandagam, if I'm not mistaken. And that's called Sanket Konj or Sanket Gram. And that's supposedly the place where Radha and Krishna first met. And so they met each other halfway. <laughs> they have this phrase in uh, relationships. Uh, I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> in other words, Yeyatamamprapadyante. <laughs> the man, the lady say, well, I, you know, you surrender to me half, half, I'll surrender. You, know, you give half to me, I give half to you, so we make one whole complete. <laughs> Krishna is telling that also. As you surrender, you surrender to me 10%? And Prabhupada says exactly the same thing. He says, you, you give 5% to Krishna and show, give 5% of your time and 5% of your heart and 5% of your attention, your interest, which is not very much. <laughs> 5% of your total experience in life and energy. So then Krishna says, okay, I give you 5%. 5% of one of my millions and millions of avatars, <laughs> I'll give you 5% of the Paramatma. I'm in your heart as Paramatma, so I'll give you 5% of my attention. And so then you find that when you're serving Krishna, because of that 5% attention by Paramatma, your karma fall, your destiny is to cut off your finger in the kitchen. But then you're cutting and you're chanting Hare Krishna, but you're also thinking some Maya. <laughs> you're chanting, but your mind is a little bit, because really chanting and Vaidhi Marg is chanting Hare Krishna and thinking of something besides Krishna. And chanting in Rag Marg is chanting Hare Krishna and also doing Seva and thinking of the Leela. Or at least thinking of Krishna, not his form, his quality. <laughs> and Vaidhi Marg were in the kitchen cutting the subji. And Hare Krishna, we're hearing the tape, Hare Krishna. We're thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't have joined. Hare Krishna. <laughs> But that wife was pretty nice. <laughs> so then, oh, so but it was your destiny to cut your finger off with a very sharp knife in the kitchen. But because you're giving, I've tried to give five percent of your attention to Krishna, then a super soul reduces that karma. That's his interaction. It's uh, yeah, reciprocation. Let's say. But on this plane, the devotees are hundred percent surrendered to the Lord, and they're thinking of him hundred percent. So the Lord is running out. It's, you can imagine, because really that's what happens. Radharani runs out of her house in Abhisar to meet Krishna. And Krishna is sometimes waiting for her. And generally it's so tall like that when the lover, the female, runs to meet the male, that's the Abhisar. But the male is also running to meet the female. And sometimes Radharani is waiting for Krishna. And so Krishna is also in Abhisar. So all the devotees from Navadvip Mandal they're all going on a love journey to meet their beloved Goranga and the Thai and, and Jagannath, Prajendra Nanda and Shyam Sundar, in the Sanket Kunj of uh, Jagannath Valava Gardens and Giriraj and Govardhan and Nila Madhav and Nila, Niladri. Niladri means the blue mountain. So that's Niladri is like Govardhan. The whole place of Puri is called Niladri. You've heard of Nilachala? Nilachala. Prabhu Jaya, what is that? Nila Chala Chandra Prabhu Jaya Jagannath, Jaya Jagannath, some kirtan we So there they are. So who is with him? Nityananda Garadhar Shikuri Gosai Chalilena Harishe Kaharo Maya Nai. Nityananda Garadhar and Puri Goswami forgot everything else and happily accompanied the Lord. That's the only way to go with the Lord. You have to forget everything else. <laughs> 
Sarvadharman Prithaja Mahalikam. Now we're going to hear a long list of names of Gauranga's Bhaktas. And we also have forms named Krishna Lila. These are power boys. And many, many places in bhajans and also in other places of the scriptures, it says if someone just hears, there's Nam Sankirtan. We hear Nam Sankirtan. Hari Nam Sankirtan. So there's Nam Sankirtan, means Sankirtan, loudly chanting the glories with complete. Sankirtan means loudly chanting the glories of the Lord with complete immersion of yourself. Completely immerse yourself in the loud glorification of the Lord. That's one meaning of Sankirtan. Another broader meaning is completely immerse yourself and a loud chanting of the glories of the Lord with other people, other devotees, who are also similarly completely immersed in, in loudly glorifying the Lord. The total immersion of the self means that you, you immerse your heart and your mind, your heart and feelings of surrender and attachment and petition and prayer and hope. And you immerse your mind in remembering and thinking and praying and determining in your mind to be with them and to serve them and to be like them. And then you immerse your intelligence in trying to sing very clearly and very properly and very perfectly and, and tune in harmony with all of the other singers and the tal and the beat of the madanga and kartal and everything. So this way the, the kayomano vakya, the intelligence and the uh, mind and heart, words, body, Everything is immersed, <clears throat> and this is Sankirtan, complete Kirtan. Nam Sankirtan, in Krishna's name, Hari Nam Sankirtan, the names of Hari. But then there's also, there's also Guru Nam Sankirtan. There's Guru Nam Sankirtan. There's Vaishnav Nam Sankirtan. There's, there's Leela Nam Sankirtan. So many types of Sankirtan. So this is, now we're going to have Vaishnav Nam Sankirtan. It's the Nam Sankirtan of whom? Hari? As they say, Hari, otherwise they say Nam Sankirtan. They say, Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan, Shri Hari. Shri Hari, Radha, Shri, Hari Krishna. That, that lion-like Lord Hari, who steals the opulence of Radharani's heart. Right? Shri, Shri means that opulent heart of Radharani. He steals. Hari means thief. Lion means la, Hari means lion, thief. He steals that great opulence and effulgence and beauty of Radharani's heart, and attracts her fully with his love as Madan Mohan. Then once he steals Radharani, then he gets his heart stolen. <laughs> one thief gets robbed by another thief. So one thief breaks into your house and robs you. He takes everything. Takes five lakhs. Then you think, oh, where's who stole? I get back at him. And he said, so-and-so, Amiyat must stole you out of your house. So then you find out, where does he live? So when you go there, you take one crore from him. Big time. <laughs> so Krishna stole the heart of Radharani. But that was a mistake. <laughs> because then Radharani in turn stole his heart so much he became a beggar. He became a, he had nothing. She robbed him of everything, so he had to become a beggar. We don't read about Radharani becoming a beggar. You know, taking sannyas and becoming a bhikari, praying bhikari. <laughs> so Krishna became totally bankrupt and he had to admit, he had to sign a legal paper. He had to sign a legal paper that I'm a, I'm a debtor. So no, and he wrote in his own handwriting on this, there was a legal form. Lita Saki drew up one form, uh, a letter of debt. It's called a letter of debt on stamp paper. And then Krishna had to sign it and he wrote it in a pariyaham. Napariyam <laughs> Sham. <laughs> Napariyam Sham. And his handwriting was all like trembling. Letters going up and down. He was, he, 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 it really hurt his ego to admit his defeat before Radharani. So he was trembling in submission. So he said, I'm a debtor before Radharani. I can't, I can't pay her debt. So let's hear these names of these devotees. And this is Nam, this is Vaishnav Nam Sankirtan. Sarvabhoma Jagananda. So you hear the name and try to think, oh, Sarvabhoma, and catch something about Sarvabhoma, about the Charya Jagananda. Sarvabhoma Jagananda, Kashi Mishavar, Damodara Swarupa Sri Pandita Shankar. 
Kashivara Pandita Acharya Bhagavan Shri Pradyuna Mishra Prima Bhaktira Pradana Patra Shri Paramananda Rai Ramananda Chaitanya Radhwarapala Sukriti Govinda Brahmananda Bharati Shri Rupa Sanatan Raghunatha Vaidya Shivananda Narayana Advaitara Jeshta Putra Sri Achyutananda Vaninatha Shiki Mahiti Adi Bhakta Brinda Anatha Chaitanya Vritya Katajani Nam Ki Chota Ki Bara Sabe Kalila Payan Vrindavanas Thakur he, he bathing his heart in the remembrance of all these wonderful Vaishnavas and soothing his aching mind feeling intense separation from them. And just by repeating their names, he's invoking their presence in his heart and begging for their mercy to carry on the line of devotion. Sarabhama Bhattacharya Jagananda Pandit Kashi Mishra Dhamadar Sri Shankara Pandit Kashi Shvara Pandit Bhagavan Acharya Sri Pradyumna Mishra Paramananda Puri Ra- Ramananda Rai the Lord's pious doorkeeper Govinda, the Dwarapala, the protector of his door, his Chokidar, Chaitanya's Chokidar, Chaitanya of Dwarapala, Chaitanya's Chokidar is his god brother Govinda Das, another disciple Ishva Puri. Sukriti, how much Sukriti, how much spiritual Sukriti, of course he's a Nitya Parishad, that's, that's enough. In other words, to have intim- intimacy with the Lord, or great devotees, you have to have a lot of Sukriti. Those disciples of Prabhupada that traveled with him and so intimately personally served him obviously had tremendous Sukriti, no doubt. Then Brahmananda Bharati, Shirupa Sanatan, Raghunatha Vaidya, Shivananda Narayan, Sri Achyuta, who is the eldest son of, Vait, of uh, Advaita Charya, he was mentioned. And then uh, he said, Jeshta Putra. Vaninath, Shiki Mahiti, and innumerable other topmost devotees. Both prominent and in obscure. <laughs> That's nice translation. He says, Chota and Bara. <laughs> Big timers and small timers. Ki Chota, Ki Bara, Sabe Karidapaya. So it's translated as the prominent ones are the Barawalas. The Barawala, the big, the big devotees, and then the Chotawalas are the, uh, the obscure ones, <laughs> whose names are unknown to me. All forgot everything and joyfully went with the Lord to greet the devotees. Paramanande savichali lena prabhu songe, bhaya jisti bhaya gyan nahi all the associates of Lord Garanga and Jagannath Puri went with the Lord in great ecstasy. Paramananda, Prabhu Songe. They had neither external vision or external consciousness. Bhaya Dristi, Bhaya Gyan, Nahikarongi. So they were just moving in a bubble of bhav, moving in a bubble of bhav down the road with the Lord. They, they could not see anything. And Puri, the rickshaw wallas, the signboards, the shops, they just saw the beautiful form of Lord Garanga as they walked behind him. And they were just remembering and thinking of all these devotees. Oh, I'm going to meet so-and-so. I wonder how so-and-so is. And I wonder if his, his wife was, was expecting last year. I wonder if they'll bring the sun. And <laughs> because it's the society of devotees. It's the Vaishnava Raja Sabha. Those grihasas and bhairagis and, and sannyasis and brahmins and all types of people and they have all different relationships. So the devotees will think of, oh, I'm about to meet someone, how will they look? And I wonder if Raghava Pandit bought any new creation, new preparations for Lord Chaitanya this year. So many thoughts. So they were not in external consciousness or external vision. They were just seeing their thoughts and moving behind the Lord full of ecstatic expectation of meeting the great devotees. She had waited to sing us Sarah Vaishnava Sahite, Asya Mi Lila Prabhu, Atara 
Ataran Alate. The lion like could wait to try in his group of Vaishnavas met the Lord's group at Ataranala. Tum, 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 tum. Coming down the Grand Road, four kilometers. They, they walked a long way because from, Kach, Kach, from Gambira up down the Grand Road past Sri Mandir and Jayana Falva Gardens. And then you have to turn off. Not, no, before Jayana Falva Gardens, you turn off, go towards Narendra Sarovar, towards Bhuvaneshwar. And you walk out that road and then you get to the Barginati River. And that bridge there is a Taranala, so that's three or four kilometers, maybe five kilometers walk. And then they met there, the meeting place. There they are. A Taranala, the, the bridge with 18 arches supporting it. You know, it was keystones, the old fashioned construction arches. Prabhu O Aila Narendra Aguyan, Duigoshti Deka Deki Haila Vidyaman. When Garanga passed Narendra Sarovar, he saw, he saw the two groups meet. Dure deki dui goshti anyone sava, dandavattahaya sava padila vaishnava. When the two groups of devotees, the Puri associates of the Lord and the Navajip associates, they saw each other from a distance, they all fell flat and offered obeisances to each other. Dure deki dui goshti, the two parties of chanters, the goshtas. Dandavat Padila Vaishnava. This is the uh, rule, Vidhi Nishade in Shastra, when one goes to, when one sees a devotee, especially his guru, but any devotee from a distance, he, as soon as he sees the devotee, he should pay obeisances. He'll naturally want. These devotees, no one said, oh, everyone pay obeisances. <laughs> They saw, oh, there's our beloved, our beloved Chutan, uh, Chutananda, the son of Advaita. There's Advaita and all these great devotees. How fortunate we are to simply have their darshan. And soon we'll meet them and hear from them and associate with them and chant with them. So they immediately paid dandavats. Then when they met, then they, they, they would meet, they would embrace, or they would again pay obeisances. And that same rule is there when one enters a temple. When he first enters a temple from a distance, he should pay obeisances to the Lord, and then he comes forward closer, uh, in closer proximity to the darshan manda, then he again pays obeisances. Uh, this rule is not known so well, but this is the proper etiquette to show not only respect um, when entering the Lord's sanctum, sanctorium of his temple, it also shows the intense love of the servant for the master. We should always be in consciousness of a servant. And when, we, when the servant enters the uh, room of the master, you see in the old days in the palaces of the kings, the servant would come and uh, maybe there was a bell system and somehow he heard the bell and he knew it was his bell to call him to the king's room for his designated service. So he would run to that place and knock gently and then come in. And then as soon as he entered the door, he would, pay, he would bow on the ground upon entering the room of the king or before the king. Then he would come over again in front of the king and again bow and say, Yes, my lord, how may I serve you? Because he understands, <clears throat> I am a master, and I, I can't just walk into this room. This, this, not only is my master sacred and respectable to me, but even his tadiyanam samarchanam, even his room, his uh, bedroom where he may call me for seva, or his uh, assembly room, or his royal hall, or dining room, wherever he may call me, the, anything to do with my lord, my master, my, my king, is uh, worshipable for me. This was the consciousness of the servants in the Vedic times. So when a devotee walks into a temple, he's just walking, okay, here I am, I'm here, hi, Krishna. Walks in like this is my house, and looks around and see what the Maha Prasad is on the left-hand side, and see what kind of books are there, who's around, and check out, see here and there. And then uh, go in, slowly saunter up to the temple, and then we get in front of the Lord, and make our ceremonial pranams or dandavats. This is uh, not exactly the attitude of someone that realizes 
to what's going on around him. But the temple building is, is the private domain of the Lord uh, from the doorway on in. <laughs> as soon as you open the door, you're entering Vaikuntha. You're entering across the threshold of that door. It's a spiritual world. It's the private home of God, of Krishna, Bhartasarthi, whomever. Um, because we know these rules by reading in the Shastra and more we, and by reading those rules and seeing those rules and seeing people follow those rules, <coughs> we've also developed the idea that it should be done and we try to do that uh, and instruct our followers by our example also. Upon, as soon as one enters a temple, there should be, he should make a sound with a bell. If there's no bell, it goes... Uh, it's U.P. and you know, the thieves rip off the bells. But there's a bell outside the temple. <laughs> so uh, you can imagine if you've been running a temple in Sevakun for 400 years, how many bells he must have bought and decided to forget it. I'm not buying any more bells. As soon as you buy a bell <laughs> and put it outside your temple, then uh, someone steals it and you buy another one and after about Ten years of that, there's no more bells, so for the last 200, 300 years, there probably hasn't been any bell in front of any temples in Vrindavan. Dure Deki Dandavata, Dure Deki Goshte, Vaishnav. They saw all the devotees from a distance and they paid obeisances. Dure Advaitere Deki Sri Vaikuntanath, Ashru Mukhe Karite Lagila Dandapa. So the larger group of devotees, now the avisars, actually the actual avisar here is between <coughs> the lover and beloved, it's Advaita and Goranga, Vaikuntanath. He's being referred to as Sri Vaikuntanath. This is the uh, name here referred to for Lord Goranga. When the Lord of Vaikuntha saw Sri Advaita, because the Lord of Vaikuntha is Mahavishnu, <laughs> And Mahavishnu is seeing it. Wait to Charya, who is Mahavishnu, or let's just say his expansion and the mood of service. It's interesting because <laughs> the Lord expands himself to serve himself. That's what we are. We're all expansions of Lord and we're meant for the service of the Lord. Krishna expands. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavitavis Tabire Eva Nijrupataya Kalavi. Goloka even even satya kilatma bhuta. Govinda mari purusham tamaham vajami. Govinda Krishna expands himself, his ladani aspect of himself, to relish the form and taste and mellow of associating receiving service from that energy, that energy of the energetic, that prakriti of the purusha, the personification and source of all the other expansions of that energy is Srimati Radharani, ladani shakti sarupini radha. So now Mahavishnu has expanded and entered this world as a way to Charya to worship the Lord, Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna, to beg him to come and liberate the jivas or his, or his lost servants who are not engaged in the service. The way to Charya is fully engaged in the service. So it seems to be why on these verses when he this is what I'm uh, surmising is the thinking of Vrindavan Das Thakur behind why he's in this, why he's using this particular name for Lord Garanga, as Arjuna addresses Krishna by different names for different reasons in the Bhagavad Gita at different junctures of the drama of the Kurukshetra discussion, Bhagavad Gita, Rishikesh and Padmanabh, etc. There's reasons, obviously, why the realized Veda Vyas, Vrindavanas Thakur, is addressing, referring to Lord Chaitanya as Prabhu, or as, as Goranga, or Gorachandra, or now it's Sri Vaikuntanath. We know that he's Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahayanya. And Lord Chaitanya is none other than Radha and Krishna, Yuga, coming from Goloka Vrindavan the topmost Vaikuntha planet. But now he's, it seems that it's a bit of an Aishvarya Nam, Sri Vaikuntha Nam. Because Goloka Vrindavan is beyond Vaikuntha. 
can say it's part of the generic spiritual world, spiritual sky, but it's not really, let's see, it's the core of the spiritual world, the center of the lotus flower of the whole spiritual firmament. So now the masses of devotees they've met and they've offered dandavats, that's how they're responding when the, the masses of Puri Vasis, Puri Parishads with Lord Garanga meet all the masses of the, you know, the whole collection or assembly of the Sangha of Garanga's Bhaktas coming from Navadri. Their initial response is Dure Deki, Dure Deki, Dandavata Paila Vaishnava That they, from a distance, they fell down at the feet and uh, uh, offered Dandavas to the feet of those Vaishnavas on the ground. Now, when, what, now, how did Guranga, Sri Vaikuntanath, how did he respond when he saw his beloved from a distance, Dore Deki? So now you can see, by the, you can judge by the response of Guranga, the intensity of love between the lover and the beloved. That's why the principal players here in this Milan, this Puri Milan, this Guranga and way to Puri Milan at Narendra Sarovara, the principal players here, the love and the beloved, are Vaitacharya meets his beloved Garanga. Because he was, whole life was dedicated to bringing his beloved Lord Sri Krishna to this world, to liberate the world, and his worship and his seva and everything. And then Garanga, Krishna came as Garanga Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when the Lord saw, so now, Goranga Dori Deki Advaita Charya, how did he respond? Did he offer Dandavats? Dori Advaita Deki, Ashru Mukhi Kariti Lagila Dandapat. He, he also offered Dandavats because, as I said, Advaita Charya is a hundred years older than he is. Dharma was like 80 years, 70, 80 years at least older. So he's senior in so many respects, and he's the, he's the the grand sire, the grand sire of the whole Gaudiya movement in one sense, because he was having Bhagavat Shravan, Bhagavat Kata every day and engaging in Nam Sankirtan and preaching to everyone the glories of the Holy Name and preaching the glories of Nam Sankirtan and Kali Yuga long before Gauranga even came. And he had so many, he had a Sangha in Navadri where he went, he came to preach to Nam Sankirtan. And then his primary Sangha was in Shantipur, his headquarters. He converted Haridas Thakur, to the Holy Name, and so many great devotees. Vaitacharya is one of the great senapatis of the Garanga's Sankirtan movement in the Kali Yuga. He's the forefather of the whole thing. And of course, Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya, Ashram, his, his face, he said, he, his, his tears were in his eye. He was crying when he saw Vaitacharya. He offered obeisances, Ashramukhe Dandavat. That when he offered, he offered also offered Dandavat to wait to try, he was crying. So like so many people, like say, some, for example, some, some uh, lady says, oh, my husband's been overseas for two years working and I haven't seen him. He's coming back to Delhi. Can you come, with sisters and friends, can you come with me? I want to meet him at the airport. I'll give you an example. So now five or ten friends of that wife, that, whoever that wife is, all girlfriends or whatever, they all go to the airport to meet that one, that husband. So when they come, they may know the husband of that wife, and they're, they're happy. But when the wife sees the husband, she'll cry, and he'll cry, because they have such a tight bondage of love. So they, when they see each other, their hearts melt and, and, and pools of joy and create these anubhavas of crying and other things, that which, in, which reveals the intensity of their loving bondage. So then, what it, now, that's how Garanga responded when he saw Advaita. Now, how did Advaita respond when he saw Garanga? She had waited Dure Deki Nija Prana Nath, Puna Puna Haite Lagila Pranipat. Similarly, when Advaita saw Lord Garanga, who is his Nija Prana Nath, the very Lord of his own life, at a distance, he offered repeated obeisances. It's pranipat. 
pranipatena, tadvidi pranipatena, pariyapashina siddha. And as I mentioned, when the uh, lover and beloved meet, it stimulates their stairati, and then so many anubhavs, so many feelings are generated. And if they escalate from crying to this to that, then those anubhavs become sattvic bhavs. And the sattvic bhavs can go into sanchari and so many other ways. So that's what we're going to hear now. Ashukampa shweta morcha pulaka hunkar danda vata bhai kichu nai deki ar. Tears of love, ashu, shivering, kampa, perspiration, swayed, fainting, murcha, hair standing on end, pulaka, loud roaring, hunkar, and offering obeisances was all that could be seen at that time. So everybody was going wild. Everyone was actually overwhelmed. They are overwhelmed. All the Gauranga was overwhelmed with meeting Advaita. Advaita was overwhelmed with meeting as Nija Pranath Gaur. And all the Gaur Bhaktas were overwhelmed. The Navadvik Vasis were overwhelmed meeting the Puri Vasis. And, and, they, and they were just falling like dominoes all over the ground. Oh, oh, what you told me? Boom, boom. It was like an amazing scene. It's like you see in some battle war movie and some guy has a machine gun and he's, he's mowing down, they say, mowing down all the enemy forces and they're just falling. They're just like collapsing here and there all over the place, you know. So they're, but that's, I mean, they're just falling on the battlefield. Here they're all falling on the dam of Puri and ecstasy of love. It's, uh, maybe... So that everyone was experiencing sattvic bhavs. I mentioned one bhav of crying, but it's escalated now. There, dui goshti danda bata ke vakari kare sub chaitanya rase vivala antare. Although the two groups of devotees offered their obeisances to one another, no one knew who was offering obeisances to whom, because <laughs> they were absorbed in Garanga's loving mellows. Chaitanya ras vival. They were totally bewildered. Vival. Antari, uh, Vival Antari, within themselves they are totally Vival. You know this word Vival? Vival, it means like, just, just bewildered, confused, not knowing clearly what to do. Kiva Chote Kiva Bhara Jnani Na Agyani Dandavata Kari Sabe Kari Hari Dwani Whether big devotee or small devotee, junior or senior, whether they were learned and pundits or not, Everyone chanted the names of Hari, Hari, Hari and offered the bases is. Dhanabhata Hari Dwani. So this is the melting pot of bhakti. In the melting pot of bhakti, there's no upadis. In the melting pot of bhakti, there are no upadis. Upadis. <laughs> the melting pot of bhakti, there are no upadis. <laughs> Designations. Big, small, Learned, foolish, not learned. Oh, he's a big Chaturvedi Pandit. Oh, he's a Rikshawala. Oh, he's all wearing Urdhva Pandra Tilak. They're all Gaur Bhaktas. They're all Vaishnavas. They're all respectable, worshipable entities because they've taken Vaishnava Diksha. There's no more casteism and no more caste distinction. Brahman Surja, the Vaishnavas, the Param Param Vaishnavas. All to be honored, all to be respected, all to be served. So they, they were all, they were one, they all chanted one name, Hari, Hari, and they all engaged in one activity, Dandavats, because they all understood Trina, the peace, and Nichena, to Ariva, Sahishana, Amani, Na, Amani, Dina, Kirtani, Sadari. I am, I am no designation. I am Gopi Bhartu, Padakamali, or Das, Das, and Das. I am simply a servant of the servant of the Vaishnavas. Ishvaro, Karina, Bhakta, Songe, Dandavat. Advaitari Prabhu O Karena Seymat. Guranga Mahaprabhu also offered his obeisances along with the devotees, and Advaita Charya did likewise. Mahaprabhu, Nityananda, and Advaita Prabhu reciprocated with all the devotees who were offering obeisances by offering them obeisances in return. Goradibo. Such pure dealings are based, based on transcendental literatures are not found in the non-devotee. 
smarter community. We live and live surrounded by shells and shells of designations. Chotan Bhara, Gyani and Agyani. But in Gaudi Vaishnava there's no Chota Bhara, there's no Gyani Vigyani, Gyani Agyani. There's no fool, there's no learned. Everyone, everyone, they're considered the most learned of all entities. Most learned of all human beings is one who surrenders to Krishna and serves him with love. Bahunam Janmanam Ante Gyanavan Mam Gyanavan Mam Prapadyante Vasudeva Sarvamati Samahatma Sarulava. Every Gaudi Vaishnava is a very rare gem of a great, great Bharavara Bhakta. Samahatma Sudurlava, Durlab, they're very rare to find such a transcendental personality as a Vaishnava who has clear heart and clear mind and beyond all designations and free from all interest in low puja and pratishta, kamadi kanak pratishta. He's fixed in the Lord. Nadanana janana sundari man kavitam vajagdisha kavi mama janmane janmane shve bhagavatad bhakti hoite ki tayin. He wants only bhagavad bhakti. Hoite ki bhakti causes unmotivated bhakti, service to the Lord. He wants no pay, he wants no reciprocation, he wants no commission. He just wants service, service. Seva deito, seva deito, seva deito. Or seva deito. No bog, only seva. That's the bliss. Seva is bliss. Sevananda. Nityananda Sevananda. If you want to experience Nityananda, Nityananda means eternal, unlimited, unending bliss, joy, happiness, and fulfillment, sweetness, and charm. If we want to experience that, then we have to follow in the footsteps of Nityananda, Nityananda Anusharan. Nityananda Anusharan means to take shelter and follow in the footsteps of Nityananda because Nityananda was Nityananda. He was the abode, the abode of unlimited eternal joy and bliss because he was absorbed in the bliss of serving Krishna and Goranga from moment to moment in every possible way he could even imagine in any possible form he could imagine. So this is the real meaning of Nityananda and the meaning of, of a Sevaite is that he experiences the bliss of Seva and engages in the Lord's service in unlimited varieties of form. Nityananda means Nitya Seva Rupam, unlimited varieties of forms of service expressions that one displays and exhibits, exhibits for the pleasure and happiness of the Lord, of his heart, his pranana. Lord Krishna, Lord Gauranga, Lord Radha. So it's amazing that God and his first expansion, Krishna and Balaram, Gauranga Nityananda and Vaita, all the Purushavatars, all the Purushavatars, Mahavishnu, Gavrilakshya Vishnu, Kirilakshya Vishnu, combined together in Vaita, and then Nityananda, Balaram and Chaturvyuha, Vasudeva Krishna and Gauranga, and Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna, they are offering obeisances to the Nitya Siddha Parishads, the Jivas, or even the, the Sadhana Siddha, or maybe Sadhana Siddha is there in the party also, Haridas Thakur, etc. And they're all, and they're not thinking, I am, I am big, I don't, I don't offer obeisances. God, Gauranga Mahaprabhu, by his own example, Achar, he's showing this Trinadapi. He's not only preaching, he's walking his talk, as they say. Gronga Mahaprabhu thinks of himself as lower than a straw on the street, and he behaves. It's one thing, yes, I think, very, I think I'm very humble, and I, yes, but I don't act humbly. <laughs> yes, I respect, I respect everyone, yes, yes. And, and you never offer obeisances to anyone. <laughs> or show respect, actually, physically, obviously, express your physically express your respect towards anyone we've never seen. But uh, Lord Chaitanya preaches and talks about humility and thinking of oneself as lower than the star on the street and he acts practically by his example of his lila as being so humble and so respectful to all the Vaishnavas. So the, um, this is a beautiful culmination of the that the, the, the Long await, the long-awaited meeting of the lover and the beloved. Obviously, Gauranga has been thinking about and remembering Advaita Charya for eight long months, because he comes every year for four months to Puri, and in his absence, that's eight months. 
Yugayatam the Meshina, Chakshu Shaprajayatam, Shanyayatam, Jagatam, Govindavira, you know, that uh, a Nimesha, a blink of an eye for a lover from the beloved may seem like thousands of years. So, how much love would Vaita Charya ask for Garanga? We can only imagine. We can't imagine. <laughs> we can't really imagine. How much love would Vaita ask for Garanga? And how much love Garanga asks for Vaita? So, in that intense loving bondage between the two, Moments of separation, weeks of separation, months, eight months of separation is colossal. It's colossal, it's magnet, it's infinite, it's so mountainous. And now they're finally meeting at Narendra Sarovara. Narendra. The king of all the jivas, <laughs> Narendra. Mahavishnu, Advaitacharya. Indra means king and Nara means living enemies. Then what happened? Emata dandavata karite karite dui goshti ekatra milila milila bhala mate. After offering obeisances in this way, the two groups of devotees merged together and exchanged greetings. So this was from a distance. First, there's a, they seen the Lord and offering obeisances, then coming closer and merging together, they all they mixed together. Ekatra milan ekatra. The two groups, all the two groups who became ekatra became one. One in love, the two become one. Two become one in the bondage of love. So the the, the beloved devotees, the the Bhagavat, what is it we say? The Savior Bhagavan, Savior Bhagavan, Garanga Mahaprabhu, Nityananda, then the Sevakas. The Sevakas means the devotees, the devotees in the Lord, Savior Bhagavan, Krishna, and Sevaka Bhagavan. They all came in Milan. First there's a distance, Duri Deki Dandavat, and then just seeing at a distance, crying and trembling, hair standing on, that's Dvaita, my Dvaita's there, oh Dvaita, oh my, and then Dvaita is looking, oh Gaur, my Nija Pranath, and again and again paying obeisances and hearts, their heart, they're crying, you don't cry without all kinds of emotions, and she said, choked voice, everything is there, choked voice, all the Ashtik Sattvic Bhavs, hair standing on, it's like an extremely emotionally, extremely emotionally surcharged moment at a distance. Gor, Advaita. And then they finally came. Ekani, Ekani, J. Hoyla, Ananda Darshan, Ucha Haditwani, Ucha Ananda Krandan. At that place of Mila and the Render Sarovara, the devotees from Puri, the Nadia Vasis, and, and the Nadia Vasis and the Oriya, the Oriya, Oriya Vasis, they met together, joyfully met, and they saw each other, Ananda Darshan, a great bliss, and they loudly chanted the names Hari, Ucha, Uchaisik Java, Hari, Hari, and they cried ecstasy. Manusheki Pari, Iha Karite Varana, Sabe Veda Vyasa Ara Sahasra Varana. Ranamanas Thakur, who's seeing this whole Leela in his Samadhi Dristi, when he's writing this. And he's amazed, he's totally astonished by what he's seeing in his meditation and his Leela Pravesh of his Prem Samadhi, Prem Dristi. And he's saying, he's saying, ah, ha, hanta, hanta, what is, what am I seeing, what am I seeing? He says, a human being cannot possibly describe all of what's happening at this moment. Only Veda Vyas and Ananta Shesh are able to do it. Of course, he is that Veda Vyas. So he's giving some glimpse. He's saying Ananta Shesh with his thousands of mouths, he can maybe say something about this wonderful, ecstatic meeting of the Advaita Goranga Milan, the Nadia Vasi, Goranga Nadia Vasi, the Goranga Nadia Vasis meet the Advaita, I mean, the Advaita's Nadia Vasis meet the Goranga Odia Vasis. Right? Odia Vasi, Odia, 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 Odia Nadia. <laughs> Odia, Odia Nadia Vasi Milan at the Narendra Sarovara. Is that right? The Odia, Odisa Vasis of Goranga. So beautiful. Advaita Dekia Prabhu Lahilena Kole 
Sinchilena Ungatana Premananda Jale. And finally, Advaita Charya embraced Lord Doranga. Advaita Prabhu Alingata. And soaked him with tears of love. So Advaita, seeing Advaita, Goranga embraced him and soaked Advaita with tears of love. Angatana Premananda Jale. Advaita Deki Prabhu. So he bathed him. It sounds like Mother Yashoda, when Krishna comes back from Uttara Goshta Lila, returns and meets Mother Yashoda. She bathes his whole body with her tears of love and the breast milk pouring from her breast, like a shower of Charnamita. There's Charnamita, there's water. There's water and then there's milk and all, and all sweet bhavas mixed in both and other things. So the sweet bhavas of her vatsalya lover, parental lover, mixed in her tears. Those cool tears of love to refresh her son after a hot day in the scorching sun and cow herding. Because there's two types of tears, hot tears of anger and frustration and the cool, cool tears of love, different temperatures. So you, show that, you can imagine when you've been walking on a dusty trail for an hour or so, coming back to your house, if someone offers you some refreshing, cool drink, or they wash your face with some damp towel, towel dipped in cool water, how much refreshing you'll feel. So Krishna is being bathed by the, by the praying, filled, cooling tears of Mother Yashoda's eyes, and the sweet nectarine milk, which is full of her, the milk from her breast, which is full of her, it passes through her, heart, which is an ocean of Vatsalya Bhav and parental love for her, Lala, Nanda Lala, Yashoda Lala. And she bathes him with her tears of love and her breast milk of divine affection and nourishment and love. This is when Yashoda meets Krishna, Gopal, after he returns from Kalvarli and Nandaga. Now we find Goranga greeting at Vaitacharya and bathing him with his tears of love. So we'll continue with that. We'll continue.